Hey, hey, it's Conrad Thompson. Thanks for checking out the podcast here on YouTube. Be sure to hit the subscribe button and the notifications bell. You'll get a notice anytime we upload some new content. And when I'm not asking Bruce, hey, how big was Batista's? Well, you know. One of the things I like to do is help people save money. And if you're watching this video right now and you're in a 30 year loan, man, you're overpaying your single biggest bill and you may not even realize it. I want you to do a little experiment for me. Take your calculator out, multiply your monthly house payment by 360 payments. That's how many payments there are in a 30 year loan. That big scary number, that's your total of payments. You're looking at that number? You know you can do better. Keep more of your own money right now and go to savewithconrad.com. Or maybe you've got credit card debt. Man, it's not a matter of if I can save you money with that. Your average interest rate on a credit card is more than 20%. And by the way, all the interest you pay on those credit cards, it's not tax deductible. Whereas the mortgage interest, well, that is tax deductible. So if you owe this debt, it's up to you how to pay it back. Doesn't it make sense to get the cheapest rate possible and the greatest tax deduction possible? Find out how much money you can save right now for free at SaveWithConrad.com. You don't need perfect credit, even scores in the 500s can be approved, and it's no cost out of pocket. But maybe best of all, we're licensed in more than 40 states. We can help more families than ever before. But how much can we save you? Find out right now for free with a quick quote from SaveWithConrad.com. Hey, hey, it's Conrad Thompson, and you're listening to What Happened When? With the voice of your childhood, Tony Schiavone. Tony, how are you, sir? Conrad, I'm, I'm doing quite well. How are you, sir? Better than I deserve. You know, it's mixed emotions today. You know, we can take a victory lap. You've, uh, you've exceeded your goal five times over at butts and seats, comic.com. Amazing. And, uh, everyone knows that you got in this racket, uh, to show off your grifting skills and you've really done a great job. Wow. Uh, just separating all of our listeners from their cash, mm -hmm. took it out of their pocket. You put it in your own. Mm. butts and seats comic.com and you put a, a bunch of uh half-assed out of work artists who uh, work with colored pencils mm -hmm. uh, into a new income bracket so yeah. good on you you know you're continuing to just uh spread joy joy and merriment all around but today is sort of a bad day too because this might be one of the last times we get to watch 1986 Jim Crockett promotions together. We don't know what the future holds, but we know we want to keep talking about 86. So man, it's, it's mixed emotions. It's like your mother-in-law driving off a cliff and your new Rolls Royce. Mm. Yeah. I, I noticed how you started with, uh, shitting on me and oh, then you, and then you moved all the way to what's going on with the network. I do want to respond to the first part of it and say that I've, as all successful people in life do you always have a great life coach mm. and my life coach has become you oh well, thank you yeah because the first thing you said to me was fleece them let's fleece these motherfuckers yeah the shirt we wear <laughs> around the house here i mean uh, megan uses it as a nightgown yeah let's fleece these motherfuckers if you're gonna say it you, know, you need to say it all the way yeah i, I have a uh, little known fact we all have over here at adfreeshows.com, all of us have custom car tags on the front of our car. See in Alabama, you don't have to have a license plate on the front and the rear of your car. You just have to have it on the rear. Well, I've got right. one on the front as do you and mm -hmm. every one of our other hosts. And it says, let's fleece these motherfuckers. Mm. Yeah. So it's ingrained in our everyday culture. Just let's, let's separate the marks from their cash. Right. Yeah. And, and you have done like what I have taught you. Mm -hmm. You know, I was teaching you $9 lessons, right? Yeah. You've really taken it to another level. Well, you know what they say? They say you have to give the people. Well, I don't want to steal this from uh, Excalibur. He says you have to give the people what they want. You have to give the people value for their dollar. Mm. And I think we do. Oh, for sure, dude. You know, we're, we're busting balls, but the old mm -hmm. thing in, in any successful business is you give somebody, you know, $2, you ask somebody for a dollar and then you mm. give somebody $2 worth of value. Right. You see any of the reviews from adfreeshows.com and that is the overwhelming sentiment. Oh my God, there's more than I can even keep, keep up with here. Well, that's a good thing. And yeah. you have exceeded expectations on this butts and seats comic. And I think that's probably like the story of your career. You just sneak up on people. You're like <laughs> a, you're Ooh. like a fucking moss, right? You just grow on people. Ooh. I, uh, 
Yeah, maybe that's it. Uh, and it takes a long time for moss to take hold sometime. Hmm. Uh, so there you go. So here we are uh, in the uh, uh, comic book coming out later this year. And we're good, excited about it. Really excited that uh, Dirk Manning, who's been the writer and the guy who's been in out front of all this. Great guy. Yeah, used uh, many different artists. Right. Instead of one, many different artists. So we're giving a lot, like you said, a lot of artists a chance to do some work and showing their talents. And I'm really excited about that. I haven't met any of the artists yet, but we're all going to get together on a big Zoom soon and talk about how happy we are with our success and where we can go from here. Because realistically, and I appreciate everybody listening to me uh, go on about the comic book here. Realistically, we haven't even promoted this thing on TV yet. Right. Yeah. So. What, what's, uh, really what's, the, what's the limit of your, uh, your cartoons here? The limit? Yeah. I mean, have we... You know, when you've got all these guys using like magic markers and colored pencils, you know, is there a limit? I mean, do we know what the ceiling is? So originally mm -hmm. you, you were hesitant to think you could even pull together 20 K right. in excess of $100,000. Like, yeah. I mean, can you get to a million? Can you draw, can you, can you draw a million with, with crayons? I don't, know. I don't, I don't know if, I don't know if any comic has done that. I, I, I don't, I don't know the comic business enough to say, I'm sure some of the vintage Batman and Superman Graphic novels have done millions of dollars. Uh, that would be a, that would be a, actually a, a, a question for Christopher Daniels. Cause he's like uh, Mr. Comic book. And uh, so I, I don't know. And Dirk would know too, obviously, but again, you know, we, this is an independent comic. This is not a DC or a Marvel. Uh, this is an independent comic, but it's going to be released by Simon and Schuster. It's going to be distributed by them, which is good. Obviously distributing the books in all the bookstores and everything. So, there's a chance we're going to make some pretty good money. And you know who's going to make the most money, don't you? Uh, you. No, Mike no, Dawkins. Oh, well, that's a given. Yeah. I mean, right now, every time we say his name here, we, we owe him cash. <laughs> yeah, I know. He's smart. Smartest guy in the room. So there you go. Uh, thank you for bringing it up, and I'm excited about it. I'm, I'm really kind of disenchanted now. If I, I'm going to move on to the latter part of your comment, disenchanted that hmm. we cannot, uh, we may not be able to see much of 1986 for a while. Who knows? Uh, Cleo told me that uh, the 19, uh, that World Championship Wrestling 1993 is now up on the cock. So who knows where they're going to put it up? Uh, and I know you have friends in high places all around wrestling. And you probably could say, hey, if you're going to put 93 up, why don't you put 1986 up? Or at least do this. Don't shut off your servers, right? Don't shut off the servers that carry all the old stuff. Just put a link to it on the cock. Say, click here, and you'll be, that's what you do. Just saying. But you know more than I. I mean, you got friends in high places, so. Well, no, I also understand technology. I mean, you, you just think, you know, oh, we're running out of gas. Better turn off the air conditioner. You know, just nonsense. Like, oh, it's well, not it's nonsense. Connected. What you you can link anything up to a page just by a fucking link. I mean, that's common. That's common fucking knowledge. You don't even know what you're saying. Just link, I mean, I, Tony. I send you w h t t t p s uh, dot dot slash slash go fuck yourself dot com. We'll send you right to your house. Welcome to Grill and JR. Uh, <laughs> our... What the fuck are you talking about? It's not the way any of this works. Here's a peek behind the curtain. I sent Tony an email. It's got scripts. Okay. We'll call it copy for commercials for Arn and what happened when. I send it over to Tony and I said, Hey, I need you to cut this when you get a chance. He replies back, Why don't you send the one for our show, you dumb fuck? And I send back a screen grab where literally Arn's copy is right here and right below it about, I don't know, a quarter of an inch below it. It says what happened when copy they're both there, but he saw the Arn thing and decided, Nope, that's it. It's this simple. Conrad can't do shit. Fucking idiot. It's like, buddy, I got six fucking shows. You're going to have to help me here. It's on the same email. I don't see it. Yeah, there, there you go. Like, Unplug one computer, plug in the other one. Boom, done. <laughs> uh, 
Okay. Well, anyway, the cock better get itself in gear. It's all I got to say. Because we got shit to do, man. We got people to fleece. <laughs> oh, my God. Well, listen, here's the thing. I'm really excited that we're covering this. It might be our last one for a bit. It's April 12th, 1986. I'm disappointed because we're so damn close to the Crockett Cup. But, you know, listen, I've got all these shows saved, and a lot of our listeners will. And allegedly, there's some folks who are uploading stuff to YouTube fast as they can. Mm. Here's the plan, just so you know. We're going to gather some 1986 um, personnel, if you will. Mm -hmm. Some of the different stars that we've seen here on the show. Mm -hmm. We're going to do some interviews with them. Just do a little catch up. Talk about the glory days of 1986. And we will hit the audible button when we need to. Mm -hmm. And do some fun, like on location stuff. Mm. So we might go to Nelson Royals. We might go to the old TBS studios. Lots of little fun things that we might do, including the road trips to get there, which some of our folks have really enjoyed in the past. Yeah, they've been good. But if we need to, there's nothing that says that we can't just call an audible and cover some some other stuff that is on the cock that maybe isn't specific to 1986. And if we do that, by the way, we are going to be hearing from great friend of the show who's been on a hiatus, if you will, Mr. Cassio Kid. I don't know if you've seen but there's been a little resurgence from people online saying they really, really miss Casio being the third man in our booth, if you will. So what you're saying is, uh, you don't want to work with me anymore. Oh, Jesus Christ. I said it would be all three of us. <laughs> okay. No, I, uh, as a matter of fact, I reached out to Casio yesterday, asked him how he was doing. No, he's lost some weight. He's lost quite a bit of weight. As a matter of fact, mm -hmm. he says he feels good. And I told him, I said, I really miss you and Judy. I said, not enough to come to Huntsville to see you, but enough to send you a text. He told me that. And we mm -hmm. howled with laughter. <laughs> okay. I really miss you and Judy. Not <laughs> enough to come see you, but enough to send a text. <laughs> well, That's tremendous. There you go. I, uh, I'm kind of tethered to the house here right now. Now, why is that? Uh, Ooh. I can't give you a good reason. Oh, so you're just feeling like you need to stay home. Yeah. Yeah. I'm going to have the, uh, I'm going to have by the time, uh, by the time this airs, no, not yet. I'm going to have the second dose of the, uh, the vaccine here pretty soon. So oh. I'll feel, I'll feel more comfortable about getting out and getting around. Well, just so you know, everybody in my house has already been eat up with COVID. <laughs> been eat up with it. So we're good. As, as we say in the South, the COVID. Yeah. Did you and, have the COVID? And yeah. eat up with it. Yeah. So that's the Southernism. Yeah. Well, we, we're, we've been very fortunate here that, uh, we, we have not at this house. Um, I, I think a part of it is that Lois is just too fucking mean to get the COVID. So I'm not sure. <clears throat> yeah, here's won't the deal. Get anywhere near. You her. won't get the COVID. The COVID will get the lowest. Mm, there you go. And as you know, once you get the lowest, your life mm. ain't ever the same, buddy. Yeah, oh, man. Yeah. She threw that thing on you, and it was all downhill. Yeah, and then forty years later, as a matter of fact, uh, she and I talked yesterday. Our fortieth uh, anniversary. By the time this drops, will have come and gone. Uh, no, it will not. Sorry, the fortieth anniversary of when we met will have come and gone. Hmm. Um. So, uh, we, uh, we met, we kind of mentioned that in passing the other day, happy anniversary. I said, it, it's not June yet. She said, oh, we met 40 years ago today. I went, could have killed myself then and saved myself some pain. Um, my grandfather so recently, not recently, but before he passed away, uh, I had a real conversation with him when I was trying to learn. You know, I think everybody gets to a point where they just know grandpa is grandpa, but then yep. when you really want to learn about the man, mm -hmm. you have like a, a private conversation one day. And he says, uh, I said, so, Hey, I just trying to understand how are you married to grandma for decades? And then you got divorced mm. and he said, son, I realized around our 25th anniversary that if instead of marrying her on the day we did, if I'd have shot her, 
I'd have been out by now. <laughs> and I'd have had my freedom but now because I didn't shoot her. I don't have my freedom mm -hmm. and my sentence will continue. Mm. And I decided I should just hit the eject button. <laughs> and I love your grandma. Mm -hmm. I started being in hell. Mm -hmm. So I made a better decision. Yeah. Sometimes. And I, uh, and I didn't really understand that at the time. Mm -hmm. I've been married three years now. I'm mm -hmm. starting to put, I'm starting to figure it out. <laughs> three. <sighs> well, you just never know what life's going to bring you. And it's brought me a lot of joy. However, going back to our original comment, um, uh, once I get the, the second vaccine, I'll go out more because basically, uh, because with the exception of going down to Jacksonville and running out to the grocery store and, or the doctor and, or to get my medicines, I pretty much lock myself here in the house. I don't do much at all. Don't travel. My sister and her, and her husband, you know, they're much older than I am and they're in their eighties and I'd love to go see them. They've had their shots, but I've kind of stayed home. So so maybe once the second vaccine gets in, and by the way, the first vaccine was fine. No problem at all. No, uh, no ill effects. And, uh, so then maybe I'll, uh, I'll get out more. So maybe you'll see me in Huntsville soon. I hope so. Yeah. I, I, I miss you guys. I really do. Cause we, we certainly do have fun. I regret it the next day, <clears throat> but we certainly have fun. Hey, um, you know, I'm turning 40 this summer. Yikes. Do you think you'll have the vaccine by then and you'll be able to hang out and uh fellowship? Yeah, I'm going to have the vaccine. I've already got I've already got the second shot scheduled for the uh near the end of April. Oh, good. Yeah. I'm really excited about that. The 40, whew, that's going to be a blowout, isn't it? Well, the original plan was to do like a family thing and then to do a guy thing. Mhm. Mm you don't want to come to the family one. But the guy thing, mm -hmm. we might have diamond there. Some Diet Mellow Yellow. It's going to be a big time. Diet Mellow Yellow. It's not available anymore. Oh, I can get it. Oh, I'm sure you can. If anybody can get it, you can get it. No. I mean, I, I'm so good at getting things. I even got the COVID. So maybe I'll just get up with it. Maybe I'll just fund a couple of uh, airline tickets from Florida to Huntsville. Like Rebel. Oh. Dr. Oh, Baker, you need Dr. To, Baker. You need to quit talking. People can hear what you're saying. Now. <laughs> well, she's a friend of the show. Yeah. Yeah. But I, I will say this. What you just described is sort of akin to, um, this old guy I used to know said, son, that's like bringing sand to the beach. <laughs> <laughs> You'll figure it out later. Huh. All right. You ready? <laughs> I am ready. Uh, fire up. Uh, well, by the time you hear this, I don't know what the fuck you're firing up, but Tony and I have fired up the network because Tony, he hates the cock as you know, and, uh, he's always had an aversion to cock ever since he was a little boy. Not the only one in this house. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so anyway, we went to in ring found world championship wrestling click 1986 scooted on down till we saw April 12th. Our runtime today is one hour, 27 minutes and eight seconds. And Tony, the rumor and innuendo is that, uh, this is a big time show because we've got Ric Flair and one-on-one -on -one action with Ricky Morton of the rock and roll express. A lot to unpack here. Lots of, uh, hurt feelings over the years. Mm. And I'm excited for us to talk about this one, but I think in order to get started, we need a bit of a countdown. We have a very special countdown today as always. And let's go to the countdown right now. Three, two, one, play. On Anderson's a big trouble. Coley, hey, the Coley. Coley, we got run. Okay, that's it. There's been a disqualification because of Blanchard running in, David. So he's putting the boost to him. All right, so let me try to briefly lay the groundwork as we get this open going. Apparently Dusty Rhodes was not happy with how things were going in 1986 in that they started running two shows, two towns, Flair and Dusty were always the A town, the rock and roll express were the B town and the B town was drawing better. And to this day, the rock and roll express believe Dusty Rhodes 
wanted to sabotage their careers. He wanted to break them up. Here we go. And welcome to World Championship Wrestling. You're ringside with the NWA, the Major League of Professional Wrestling. All eyes are on New Orleans right now because we are approaching the date for the Jim Crockett Senior Memorial Cup Tag Team Tournament in the Superdome. And uh, David Crockett is on special assignment down in New Orleans right now, getting things ready for that big event. Very special announcement for you today. The NWA, as you know, has a rule that a champion must defend its title within a 30-day period. Now we find out the NWA has ordered the Russians, we're talking about Ivan and Nikita Koloff, to defend the NWA World Six-Man Tag Team Trophy. And they have also allowed Baron Von Raschke to fill in the void created by the injury to Crusher Khrushchev. Well, the Russians have decided that here today they will defend that NWA World Six-Man Tag Team Cup against the team of the Italian Stallion, Denny Brown and Nelson Royal. That'll be right here today on this program for the Six-Man Tag Team title. All the top stars of wrestling are here with us today, including this man right here, the American Dream, Dusty Rhodes with Baby Doll. It's a, it's, it's a great night, baby. You see Baby Doll looking so clean and so fine and so beautiful right here. Clean as can be, Baby Doll. Look at this. Brand new dress straight from Paris. A hey, Paris, Texas either, brother. Paris, France, paid for out of the pocket of the generous magazine Dusty Rose. Yeah. Oh, she take care of the dream. Tell him Blanchard, Iron Addison and the Nature Bar. Rick Flair, your day's the number. New Orleans, Louisiana is the sight, the sounds of the big city, Dusty Rose and Mac Dream. Rick Flair. Iron Anderson, Tully Blanchard with James J. Dillon. Baby doll told me personally she has challenged James J. Dillon to meet her in any place, anywhere, anytime. She will slap his knock in his dirty face, slap his nose on the side of his head. And let me tell you something else. There's a lot of things going on, and there's another, I might say, woman running around. Nobody's any put it any better, any better looking than Baby Dollar Self and Dusty Rosie Mac Dream, the greatest revenue producing sports attractions in this country. We're ready for five. My main man, the Raging Bull, is here. This show is on the air live and in person on the superstation because Dusty Rose is the tower of power. That's right. The American Dream, Dusty Rose, the Baby Doll. I'd like to bring up one other point. As you know, that World Six-Man Tag Team title on the line today, that means Nikita Koloff will have to wrestle on TV for the first time in months. And as you know, he refused to wrestle on TV until, until he got a TV title shot for the U.S. heavyweight title from Magnum TA. However, he has that Russian chain match signed. Therefore, it's obvious that Nikita Koloff has been able to dictate what he wants from the NWA. But he has to wrestle on TV today. A very exciting program. Let's go to the ring. <laughs> <laughs> Here comes Dave Silva. <laughs> you see the way they spell Guerrero there? No, I didn't notice. <laughs> oh, dude, God. you really should check that out. The way they okay. spell Guerrero, it was uh. fucking hilarious. Hmm. By the way, I uh, nah, never mind. <laughs> okay. Can't reveal. Okay. I, I, I worked on something this week, and you know, all right, I, I shouldn't say it yet. Don't, don't say, just, just wait till it's right, man. Cause, uh, I've got a lot of time for Hector. I really like seeing him in the ring. Such a, let me say this. I got his phone number this week. Okay, good. And how about we see Manny Fernandez there locking up with George South? Mm. By the that's, way, all three of those guys are alive. That's, that's tremendous. Manny Ramirez. We got it. We got a Ramirez. I'm talking like he's a <laughs> Boston Red Sox Fernandez. <laughs> yeah. Hey, by the way, I want to briefly touch on later this same day. Okay. So April 12th, this is directly from Jim Cornette's book, by the way. Okay. Uh, Charlotte, North Carolina, 8 PM rock and roll express over midnights and a non-title Jim Crockett. Or I always say that Jim Cornette in a skin, a shark cage, mm. $101,000 sold out. Wow. This was the fourth and final match of this rock and roll midnight express series in the Charlotte Coliseum. Each match had either been main event or semifinal, and this drew another sellout, 12,000 fans paying 101,000. This card was also closed circuited to the Charlotte Park Center for the overflow of about 600, mm -hmm. paying 4,000, and to the Spartanburg Memorial Auditorium as an experiment, drawing a $4,000 gross there. The total for this show 
was about 13,000 fans paying $109,000. This match was also aired in its entirety on Japanese TV on the World Pro Wrestling Show. Totals for Charlotte on February 2nd, February 23rd, March 2nd, and April 12th was 46,000 paying $384,000. A week well, later, by the way, is when the, the Crockett Cup would begin, but yeah, I, I'm, I'm just trying to add some context. I've seen mm -hmm. a bunch of interviews with, with Ricky Morton and Robert Gibson, and they both are steadfast in their belief that Dusty Rhodes was not happy that these guys were getting over. And I know that sounds contradictory to what you would think an announcer or not an announcer, but a booker would want. Yeah. But apparently this is the old, this is why you don't have the booker be one of the boys. While right. Thinking, right. He was perhaps offended that they did better as a draw than he did. And in, in fact, they say there was a weekend where, well, him and flair went up to New York. And, and Flair said there were so few people they couldn't even run the show. Meanwhile, we sold out Charlotte mm -hmm. and Dusty Rhodes came back. And when he came back, he said, nobody sells out Charlotte without the dream. So mm -hmm. the next time we were in Charlotte, yes, we did sell out, but Dusty was on that card. Mm -hmm. Now the reality is that didn't exactly happen. Uh, they were doing a joint show in New Jersey is what happened. Uh, and, and it was a joint show with another promotion, right? It was the JCP AWA star Wars, right? And they had nearly 10,000 people there at the Meadowlands. So mm -hmm. it's not like there weren't <clears throat> enough people to run a show, but right. the JCP take, I'm sure what they kept of that show, they probably did do better at the Charlotte Coliseum. We're talking right. about February 23rd and February 24th. Uh, I assume is when they're saying that would have happened, but just so you know, Dusty and Flair were on that Charlotte show, but that's the only time I can see that, that, that even came close to happening. I could be wrong. Well, I remember the Charlotte, uh, show that you're talking about. Mm -hmm. and, and the reason I do is because I was there, I was there just kind of like, I don't think if I'm, and I'm just trying to rack my brain. I remember watching, I think I was just there just to, because, you know, we we're videotaping it and I was just kind of hanging out. Right. And I, and I remember thinking at that time, Jesus Christ, these guys are selling out the Coliseum again. Right. And this, uh, this, and I, I remember it hit me that day that this rock and roll express and midnight express with Jim Cornette being their mouthpiece really is fucking working. I mean, it is really fucking working. And I also remember there being talk that Dusty was not happy that they were out drawing he and flair. Right. And I, I, I don't know if that's, I, I, again, you hear so much shit in wrestling. You, you don't know if that's the boys talking, you know, cause the boys did talk a lot about dusty and you know, there was a lot of, there was a lot of, uh, people, uh, Tully was one of them, you know, who was, who was pissed off about dusty's booking and felt that dusty's ego ruled everything that he did. And dusty had a large ego. There's no question about that. No question. A gigantic ego. Did it control the way he booked things? I don't know. I do know that to me, Ricky Morton versus Ric Flair, which, you know, kind of developed and there's your finish kind of develop was a hell of an angle. I mean, because Ricky was, listen, Ricky was the mouthpiece of the rock and roll express. He was, if you line up the stars, he was the bigger star. He really was. And to me, it was a no brainer that Ricky Morton and Ric Flair could have a great match because Ricky could sell for anybody. Oh, so let's see if there's any okay. lies detected in this promo. First of all, I want to give all the people this beautiful land my sincere hope. And not only that, my thank you for your gratitude for accepting me. I want to thank you for that. I'm going to be ready anytime at any place. You call the shots, I'll be there. 100%. Me gustaría decir en español a toda la gente latina y mexicana que yo soy su mexicano, Manuel es su mexicano y los dos somos la conexión latina para ustedes y para siempre. Basically, what he's trying to say, you know, all these people running around, a lot of good tag teams in the country. Right. He's just known as one of the best because I guarantee you when two Latins come together, baby, it's dynamite. I promise you one thing. Anybody standing out there, you heed the word, baby, especially in San Antonio. Cuando los latinos vienen juntos, van a ver. El corazón de San Antonio, y este lo, 
loquito chiquito, van a ver que esto es el toro y este girl, le van a ganar a todos, vamos a ser el campeón de este mundo, so this baby, if y'all want to rock, come and deal with it, because the Latin connection ain't playing, we're coming to be known, and he's right, he thanks all the people, and I thank the people being a veteran that I am, I'm very damn proud of it, I'll guarantee you one thing, we're coming here to take care of business, and that's what it's all about, taking care of business, el corazón de los latinos, lo van a ver. Y una cosa más, me gustaría dedicar esta lucha el 22 de mayo para todas las madrecitas en San Antonio. We'll be back right after this time. Yeah, not, what, he, what know, he said. <laughs> you could not wait to get out of that. <laughs> All righty then. <laughs> what he said. Let's go to the ring. We come back uh, to our Mid-Atlantic World Heavyweight Champion, Mr. Mm. Black Bart, going to be defending against Gene Ligon. Mm-hmm. We got to get Black Bart as an interview. Have you seen Black Bart's interviews in more recent years? No, I'm not. Woo woo! He's become uh, somewhat of a controversial figure, hasn't he? You will love that interview if we're able to secure that. Okay. Now that I'm thinking about all the silly interviews we're going to be able to do, this might mm. actually be a blessing in disguise. Mm. We'll see. You, you and I have always just done it, just you and I, and right. Man, if you've ever done it with two people and then you try it in a third person, it has a whole new level of excitement. Mm -hmm. Cause it, well, you get a little monotonous doing it with the same person all the time shows podcasts, Tony. Okay. So I, I mean, you've got the biggest star really of that era in your family. I don't know why we don't get his silly ass on it. Well, maybe I just answered my own question. Well, here's the deal. He has low key heat with you. He does. Oh yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. He's constantly saying, you know, why the fuck can't Tony Schiavone come up with something else entertaining to talk about than me? You know, how long am I going to have to carry this guy? Well, tell him, just tell him, don't, don't look at the comic book. <laughs> oh God. <laughs> Sorry. He's suing folks right now. I'd be careful using his likeness. I hope really? everyone can hear what I'm saying. Mm. I would be very careful using Ric Flair's likeness. Okay. Well, there you go. Here's the thing though. You've been sued for less, you know? Well, you're always looking in your, in your older age for money streams. Why not go the legal route? Well, I mean, you went to crayons. He went to the. <laughs> you always say that shit when I've got a monster at my mouth. Lois is in the room. I don't, I don't have uh, my camera on. I'm sorry. Toss that softball, buddy. Yeah. <laughs> Boom. <laughs> And Conrad knocks it right out of the park. By the way, can I just tell you that I love your kids? Yeah. I had a great conversation with one of them a couple oh. of weeks ago, and I just think, think a lot of y'all. Well, thanks. Did, I, uh, I'm did a proud good job with your raising. You should tell Lois that. that yeah. Happened. I think we did too. Yeah. With the ex exception of maybe one, I, I think we did a great job. Yeah. That Chris is a no nothing happening <laughs> son of a bitch. Oh, man. There's. There's a, a story. There's a unknown story about Chris Shivani. Well, let's hear it. I can't tell it on the air, but oh, I'll tell you, I'll tell you, uh, huh? Is that bad? It's not bad. It's interesting, mm -hmm. but I'm, I'm sworn to secrecy to it. So, but I'll tell you about it. Oh yeah. Well, I don't count. Hey, um, no, I'm going to tell you about it. That's what I'm just, saying. Like, you know, when you said sworn to secrecy, like, I don't think he cares if I know. Oh yeah. Right. Exactly. Right. What did you hear that? Uh, People over at adfreeshows.com actually asked, Hey, can we get to ask Conrad's parents anything? Hmm. That would be tremendous. Well, it already happened. Cassio kid came to the office unbeknownst to me, uh -huh. sat down with my parents and, uh, did like a little interview with them where I guess our listeners had submitted a bunch of questions and I don't know how to feel about that, Tony. Hmm. Well, it's, uh, it would be an interesting, uh, it would be an interesting take. Because I, I'd like to know, I'd like to know how you were growing up. That would be very interesting. Well, apparently Cassio said, buddy, there's some stuff in here. going to go viral. I'm like, oh, no. <laughs> well, there you oh, go. no. <laughs> there you go. That's what he used to do. Hook them horns, Texas. History. I hope I'm going to talk to him. Mid Atlantic heavyweight champion.
Here ah, is National well, that's good enough. Champion Tully Blanchard. We saw at the very top of the program what you did to Ron Garvin. Ron Garvin now obviously has that hand taped up and obviously a lot of pain in that right hand of his. Well, I tell you what, you know, you got to take your hat off to the guts and the intestinal fortitude that Ronnie, the hands of stone Garvin, has got to keep crawling in the ring when he doesn't know if his hand's broken or what. But, you know, anybody that knows anything about anything knows that when you tape that hand and you tape it up to your wrist and you tape it up real, real tight, you make that thing a lethal weapon. That's why it's not allowed in professional wrestling. Now, Garvin, if your hand is broken... Put a cast on it, because then you can still wrestle. You can still feed your family or however many families you got, but you can't use it as a weapon. Or if it's not broken, take the tape off and be a true wrestler. Get in the ring. Because you know, Tony Schiavone, if you read the rule book, it says punching with a closed fist is illegal in professional wrestling anyway. I don't know why they allow it in the first place. But things do get a little bit out of hand at that. But Garvin, be a man. Get in there and wrestle or put the cast on. Don't come out here sniveling, whining, and crying because, oh, my weapon is away from me. It hurts. My hand hurts. Because all that was was a point, Ronnie Garvin. You're this much short of everybody that's anything in wrestling. And I mean Flair, Anderson, and myself, the three horsemen of professional wrestling. So, Ronnie Garvin, you want to go, maybe, I got it, maybe you want to go get a glove and put it on your hand with reinforcement like Dusty Rhodes did with the boot. Is that what you want to do? You That way you can really try to beat people up. Well, Garvin, you go get huddled with Dusty Rhodes and you do what you want. Because the bottom line of all of this stuff is the National Heavyweight Championship is around my waist. Flair is the world's heavyweight champion and Arn is the world's television champion. And that's the bottom line. And that's all anybody needs to know about anything. National Heavyweight Champion, Tully Blanchard. Fans, will we return? World six-man tag team title match. Don't you go away. You know, it's weird that even though he was a good promo back then, he's so he's such a better promo now. Well, it's because of age. Yeah. Your perspective changes. I get all that. Hey, man, I can't wait for this match. Wow, huh? Fuck, who are they going to take the fall on here? It's got to be Denny Brown. About that Nikita shirt. Yeah, let's sell it. Oh, sorry. All right, we need we need you in a Nikita shirt. I just want to buy that one for you personally. Mm -hmm. I bet you if I wore back that backstage at AEW, I get a lot of remarks. Oh, people would be all about it. Yeah, they would. Kingston would love it. Yeah, I, you know, and that's that's one of the great things about being backstage at AEW, and I'm sure being backstage at the WWE is that the kids backstage. They're remember the past. Yeah. Remember the past. We're fans. Yeah. It's good stuff. It really is. I've got, I've got one of the, one of the, uh, one of our more famous wrestlers who will text me at just crazy hours of the night or the morning about, Hey, I'm watching WCW, uh, from like 2000. Tell me about this guy. <laughs> I'm thinking, Oh, I know exactly who you're talking about too. Uh, he used to do that to me, and then uh, he, he slowly realized he ain't awake. <laughs> <laughs> so, He's not on wrestler schedule. I can't text yeah. him at 3 a.m. Yeah. How about but that sickle, man? I know. Hey, tell me about Kui Wee. I said, what the, I, I'll text back. What the fuck do you want to know about him? Which, by the way, I uh, I That's saw he and, punk, right? And, yeah, I saw he and Mike Sanders at an independent show at the beginning of March, the Southern Honor. They were both there, just kind of hanging out. How the fuck is Mike Sanders? It, Mike Mike looks the same, man. And uh, Kiwi, man, he looks great. I mean, great, great body, looking good. I'm not surprised. He was yeah. he, he was in incredible shape back then, and that, that's he's yeah. one of the, he struck me as one of those guys where well, he's gonna look like this forever. Right, right, exactly. So and Mike uh, Sanders, I think a lot of people listening to this thought. Hey man, he's going to be a mouthpiece for somebody in the WWF. Right. Doesn't happen. Yeah, I know. I, that's, I, I agree. I thought, uh, he was a very good talker, very entertaining, very well-spoken and, uh, played the chicken shit heel very, very well when he did. It was good stuff. Hey, can I get uh, you to do something for me? Yeah. Will you I set hope. up your camera, uh, where Lois doesn't know that she's being recorded. Mm -hmm. You put on one of your new Tommy Bahama shits. Mm -hmm. and you walk over next to her 
and mm. say, Hey, Lois, you like my new shirt? Give it a feel, touch it. And then when she goes to put her hand on it, immediately say, That's enough. <laughs> Conan did it, but Mike Sanders spoofed it. With yeah. Me and Gene. And to this day, it's mm-hmm. one of the funniest things that's ever happened in wrestling. And in my little group chat, Chris McDonald did it or said that's enough at one of the starcasts we were at and it just yeah. it murdered us all and to this day all he's got to do is type in that's enough and we're all rolling and i need you to do it to lois i think it would be hilarious hmm. i got a question for you since you are since you have feelers out everywhere and you know everything uh, sure, look sure. at this look at this one arm pickup did conan kick out uh, he was very sick at one time yes he's back on the good. air doing his thing good 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 uh, you know here's the deal Conan is like, Conan's like a cockroach. Yeah. Indestructible. You set a fucking nuke off. Yeah. He, he might lose a leg. He might mm-hmm. drag it around for a little bit. Right. But before you know what, he's going to be up and running and all over the place. And you mm-hmm. didn't, you didn't see it coming. Yeah. Conan's going to last forever, bud. Yeah. Good. Good. One of the, one of the great jewels in this sport. Really. One Just, of the all time great minds. Yeah. Too. And right. I think he got a bad rap for a while because, you know, it was just in fashion. Mm-hmm. But you really take a look and just a few years ago, I mean, he was working with impact. He was working with ring of honor, MLW he was working with MLW. He was working with every promotion in Mexico. It's just right. like, how does this one guy and, and you realize it's because he's a fucking wrestling genius. Right. And we saw him on a, on a bit with the inner circle in Las Vegas. Yeah. And a W I mean, he just walked, he just came right out of the, uh, the limousine. So yeah, I, yeah, really, I'm glad to hear he kicked out. Absolutely. Yeah. And by the way, pretty good friend to have. Yeah, I would imagine. Oh, by the way, by the time this airs, I think actually when this drops uh, on, uh, not necessarily on uh, Patreon, but when it drops nationally, uh, Arn Anderson and I will have had a, uh, I believe the same night, if you're listening to this on the 14th of April, I believe this week, Arn and I are going to do a, uh, a combined Zoom uh, call call on ad-free shows. Oh, that'll be fun. And that's going to be fun because I just, no one, no, I, and I can say this honestly. <laughs> Baron took that bump. Uh, I can say this honestly about wrestling. Rest, no one entertains me like Arn Anderson entertains me. He's just... Funny as fuck, man. I, I could, I could, and I, and I do make it a point every show to go back and see him. And of course, you know, his son Brock is back there now as well. And Brock's a great kid and uh, really soft-spoken young man. Unlike his dad, who's, who doesn't know when to shut up. Uh, so I, I look forward to this. I really do because I, I, I really think of all the wrestlers that I've known throughout the years, Orange is probably my best friend of, of wrestlers because I stayed in touch with him, you know, more than anybody else right? throughout, throughout the years. And just, uh, we immediately hit it off immediately when I first met him. So funniest fucker ever still, still to this day can come up with those lines. We've talked about that, that, that are unbelievable the way his mind works. So anyway, it's going to be on ad free shows and it's going to, it either has dropped this week. Of course, you can see the replay, obviously, but uh, I look forward to that. So you know, or, start doing games on adfreeshows.com? Yeah, I know. You're going to bring it up again, right? No, here's what I was thinking. We should do like a newlywed game thing. I know. You wanted to do that once before. Yeah. Yeah. And I think it would be great to have you and Lois, but I think it would be great to have like you and Arn. Mm-hmm. And y'all like guess. So like if I was to ask you, what's Arn's favorite candy bar? Mm-hmm. What would it be? Zero. <laughs> you had no idea that was coming. <laughs> no, I went around the block twice, parked <laughs> it, put it in reverse. Bam! Got him. <laughs> That's exactly what Nikita said right there. Yeah, just to let you know it was a oh the the stallion took. I thought Denny Brown would take it. Um, yeah, that's uh, that's an old Arn Anderson Tony Schiavone inside baseball joke, um, but <laughs> zero bar. Uh, boy. So the Russians win. Well, that is all the people need to know. Here's my favorite. Here we go. Here he is. Ron, the hand obviously hurt. 
We know you're a competitor. We know that will not keep you out of the ring. And I'm sure you heard the words of Tully Blanchard a little bit earlier. Well, you know, wrestling has been my life. And I've been in wrestling ever since I was a teenager. And pain I'm used to deal with. So I'm not going to make no big deal about it. I can live with it. It's not broke. I don't think. The only thing I know, it hurts. I got it taped up to, for, for protection. If anybody don't like it, well, they'll have to make me take it off. And I don't think anybody can do that. Maybe the officials. But, Tully Blanchard, you can come out here and you can scream and complain. You're the one that tried to break my hand. So, therefore, if the tape is there, you're the cause of it. As far as I'm concerned, they committed an act of terror when they come out here and try to cripple me, maim me, put me out of wrestling. Well, I can deal with that, you see. I can deal. When I'm driving my truck in the last few days, I was doing a lot of thinking how to deal with the situation. Well, I've seen a lot of different guys deal with different situations, like Dusty Rhodes, Magnum TA. They can deal. I can also deal with the situation, you see, because you got to stay cool. I can come out here and scream, and I'm not going to do that. I'm going to take care of business my way. That's you right. see, you proved something to me. When you attack me, that there's no rules as far as you're concerned. So in other words, we're throwing the rule book away. We can do as we please. So I suggest that every time you come out of your door or come out of your car or step out of the shower, you look out. You're fair game anywhere. Don't have to be in the ring. It can be anywhere. Let's take a look at what Ron is talking about. It happened just last week right here on the Superstations. The hands of Tully Blanchard and Arn Anderson defending his world TV title against Ron Garber. Let's take a look at that tape. Arn Anderson's a big trouble. Tully, hey, Tully! 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 Okay, that's it. There's been a disqualification because of Blanchard running in, David. Tully's putting the boost to him. What are they going to do to him? What are they going to do to him? It's that double gourd buster. Oh, no! What are they going to do? They're trying to position him for something. Ron Garvin's out. Look at him. They're trying to position him. They got. Look, what are they going to. Oh! oh. He's using his boot on that right on hand. Well, I know the effects of the double gourd buster. You were not able to really see what was going on or feel what was going on, but obviously you felt it when you came to. Well, Tony Schiavone, it proves one thing. That proves it to everybody, including myself. And I firm, I'm a firm believer that I've got all the three horsemen's number. And I got it real good, you see, because they're going out there trying to cripple me because they know that I can get the job done. You see, I don't need the help from anybody. Now, when it takes three guys to beat up on one, well, I've got little tricks up my sleeves, and I've got a lot of friends. And i got some very good friends, and I know the people know who they are. So, guys... I'm talking about Tully Blanchard, Rick Flair, Arn Anderson. But Tully Blanchard, I'm going to show you how to use a boot, and I'm going to show you how to use it the right way. You see, you didn't get the job done because I'm still here, and it's still working. Yeah. Ron Garvin, more after this time out. I don't know why I love Ron Garvin, but mm. us watching 1986 has reinvigorated my love for Ron Garvin and Magnum T.A., yeah, no bullshit interviews. And here's oh. another promo, speaking of <laughs> bullshit. <laughs> I know you're upset as to what happened at the hands of the Russians in Baltimore. Hey, Tony Schiavone, what do you think I feel like not being able to fight along my brother Animal and precious Paul Ellery? Baltimore, there's going to be a war, and it's going to be in your town because it's only right. That's where it's going to end. Them stinking Russians. We've had enough to hear with you. I feel like I'm going to blow up. And I am going to blow up. Right along with my partner. Right in the face. And I'm stinking Russian. This is the last stinking straw. Yeah. Yeah. The Russians have done enough. The road warriors are hot. But next time in Baltimore, you're not just going to have animal. And precious Paul, you're going to have Hawk 2 to deal with. And I'm healthy. Good for me. Bad for you. Tell him, animal. Yeah. You know, Tony Schiavone, just when we thought it was all over, just when we thought we had the Russians beat and the Legion of Doom was number one, all this had to happen again. Now, I know you have the film 
we'd like to see it. And if you would, would you narrate it for us? I certainly will. Let's go to that tape that they're talking about. This is in Baltimore, and this is supposedly was a six-man tag team match, but Hawk suffered an injury the night before, could not make it, so it's Precious Paul and Animal against Ivan and Nikita. And what we're going to see, I know, gentlemen, as you watch this, you don't like to see it, but there was a chain, first of all, to the back of the head. Obviously down for the effects of the chain. And now Ivan will crawl over and the match will end. Already down, already dazed is precious Paul Ellery and Hawk. You were not able to make it, but I know you're taking a look at this and really upset you. Ivan crawled up, you had it right. He crawled over. He's a beaten man. They had a tough time even getting this done against my manager in the ring. The chain, no, no. The chain over the... Turn buckle right on the back of Paul Ellard. And Paul, it's good to see you standing here because that was quite a blow on the back. And if that wasn't enough, once again, Nikita Koloff twice on your back. Animal clears the ring. But obviously the damage had been done. Well, you know, Tony, it hurts just as much watching it as it did at the time. And at the time, it was very, very serious. I could not feel my legs. I was carried out on a stretcher. They took me to the hospital. They stuck pins in my feet. They checked every part of my body. Thank God. Thank God that I was not injured and permanently hurt. Now, these Russians, Tony, have set this up. They set this up from the beginning. They planned this. This is not wrestling. This is more than wrestling. And Russians, you're going to pay a heavy, heavy, heavy price. Tell them, animal. I know you got something on your mind. You know something, Tony Shibani? It was a good thing for the co ops that my brother Hawk wasn't there. My brother Hawk, as you know, got injured the night before. I was there. I felt the pain. I felt the pain of my brother Hawk getting hurt and of my manager, Paul Ellery, get hurt. These guys are like my blood. I've grown up with them guys. I've got my butt chipped with them guys. And I've also kicked a lot of butts with those guys. Now, Baltimore, it's only fair and it's only right that this match be brought to your city. At Baltimore, you're going to see us kick those Russians' tail all over that stinking ring. And Tony Schiavone, Midnight Express, tomorrow night in the Army, you're going to find out what we're all about. We want the belt amongst other things. It's ironic how justice plays itself out. But if it has to happen anywhere, this final chapter with the Russians, let it happen in Baltimore. And... The Road Warriors are back 100%. We're coming right back also. Hmm. Drama. I don't I don't love animals a promo. No, I, 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 no, Hawk was the man for the promos. And, and and you noticed that when Hawk first came out and started talking it was like dead silence in in the studio. That's because they people were scared of him. Yeah. He had that fucking presence like don't fucking, you know, I think I've told the story before, but I think it's worth telling again. Me as a fan, we would, me and my friends always got a seat ringside and we would, we would obviously try to get front row ringside and sometimes it would work out. But if we didn't, we would get a, a, we would get a ringside seat that would be on risers. You know, you have like the first seven rows and then they, they would put seats that would rise up. Right. So we would be ringside, but we wouldn't have to look at the back of people's heads. So we would, we would always set where the heels came out. That's where we set because we wanted to boo the heels and we wanted to see them. It looked close. And we were in the, we were in Roanoke and uh, like the heels came out and we booed all the heels. Fucking Angelo Mosca walked out and we didn't say a fuck. He fucking intimidated us just the way he, cause he was so big and, and so mean looking that he had this intimidating uh, presence. And that's what Hawk had. He just, you, you looked at Hawk and you say, like, I wouldn't want to fuck with that guy. And the way he talked, he was great on the promos. Animal was not that great on the promos, but still they, as a team, they worked phenomenally together. Let's talk a little bit about uh, Wahoo McDaniel here for a minute. We haven't seen a ton of Wahoo this year. He started showing up a little bit in March. They're setting up a feud with him and uh, and Mr. Garvin. Mm -hmm. 
I think a lot of fans are watching this along with us and they're discovering Wahoo maybe for the first time, because if you're a fan my age, I'm, uh, as I said, 39 years old, you probably didn't see much Wahoo at all. Right. Unless you've gone back and watched it on tapes, but like actually growing up, like as this show is airing here, the one we're watching, I'm four years old. So I'm not, mm-hmm. I, don't, I didn't watch this. I don't remember Wahoo. Right. But I think there's like a newfound appreciation for some of those guys. And I think that's, what's so great about wrestling, even compared to other sports, because it's not as if there's a, uh, a resurgence of, of guys going and watching old baseball games. I know it happens, but like, there's not a lot of younger folks going and seeking out the legacy performers and, yeah. and that exists in wrestling. And I think Wahoo is a fine example of that. I mean, I've become such a fan of, of what he did. I think I mentioned it last week. I bought his damn headdress and I'm mm-hmm. actually, I get it delivered today and I'm like on fire for it. I can't wait to see it. That That's tremendous purchase by you. Uh, I, I think it's going to be a great piece for your collection. Uh, you know, I knew why uh, I knew of Wahoo because of my fandom in the seventies. Hold on a second. All right, Copenhagen. Here we go. And it seems mm-hmm. that many of his demands have come through. Well, let me tell you something, Tony Schiavone and all the people out there. You know, Nikita Koloff, Ivan Koloff, been talking about a lot of things for a long time. Been talking about all their demands, talking about what the Kremlin had to have. But if you go back in time and you remember from the word go, when they wanted a U.S. title match on television, I signed a contract. I signed a contract for the Russian chain match. I've done all those things, and still there's excuses. Well, there's going to be no more excuses, Nikita, because somewhere in this country, you're going to pick up that contract, and we're going to have that coveted Russian chain match of yours. But all those people out there know that as frightening as you can be, that I can handle a chain too, because it was real plain and simple. When you were dangling over that top rope, trying to get a breath of fresh air, watching your eyes bug out of your head, that that chain works just as well around that big, thick neck of yours as it will mine. Now, you know, I represent not only the United States Heavyweight Championship, but all the people out there in the United States because it's this freedom in this country that allows me to be what I am. That's why I enjoy going that ring and going out there against a man that constantly puts us down. Now, Nikita, it's going to happen. It's going to happen very, very soon. And then, and only then, will we settle the controversy. The U.S. heavyweight title match on television, something that I now want more than you ever thought about wanting, something that now you're having doubts in your mind about because you think maybe you're going to soften me up a little bit, maybe wear me down, maybe cause some injury that will prevent me from being able to successfully defend this title against you. Well, a lot of people tried to do it in the past, and they didn't get the job done. Tully Blanchard won the most brutal match I've ever gone through in my life. You've never experienced anything like that. Never had anybody try to permanently maim your body. Well, I'm the man that can do that. It might be in that chain match. I don't really care. But the fact of the matter is, I'll do whatever I have to do to defend this title. It isn't going to fall in your hands if I have to be carried out on a stretcher. I've been carried out before, and I'll do it again if I have to. But you'll be on another stretcher going the same way. United States Heavyweight Champion Magnum TA, don't you go away. Still a good promo, man. Yeah, something happened during that promo. I don't know if you noticed or not, but it it brought back a memory for me. Uh, Did you see the sign, the boss Magnum TA? Yeah, they cut they cut away to it so quickly you couldn't you really couldn't even comprehend what was on it. And the reason they cut away very quickly and came back to Magnum was that Jimmy and Dusty are in the control room with Tommy Edwards. Tommy's the director, and most of you know how TV works. The director calls the shots. He kind of make he kind of designs the whole thing to look. The technical director pushes the button to make the camera, but the producer or the executive producer are, are behind them telling them what they want, what they don't want, where to go. Keith Mitchell is our producer in the truck. He's not the director. He's a producer. He kind of guides the ship. Well, Jimmy and Dusty kind of would guide the ship. And when Tommy would take cutaway shots during matches, that was okay. But if he took a cutaway shot during a promo like that, where Magnum is looking at camera, they would get pissed off big time. And he would take that and they say, get off that shot. <laughs> and he'd go right back to it. 
and I and I get it during wrestling matches, but I, I know how, how Jimmy and Dusty's focus and how wrestlers' focus was back then. If the guy's talking to the camera, talking to you, you want to see the guy. Mm-hmm. You don't want to see the fans. Right. And that was the thinking back then. And and I when I I saw that shot, it was so quick. I I, I realized what had happened. And and I get I get how Tommy is. He's the director. He wants to create, make a, you know, make make just this big creation of his. And they didn't want that. But to Tommy's credit, Tommy did a lot of great cutaway shots of fans. We've seen it. We've seen Miss Alabama over and over again. And we've seen a lot of fan reaction shots. Those are good. Those are, those are important. And I think Tommy was the first one, at least that we worked with, that realized that. We had a, another director named Toby Jenkins, who was from South Carolina, who worked on the worldwide and mid-Atlantic shows. And Toby was a much different director. But Tommy was the first one that would bring in that, you know, cutaway shots. But don't do it when Magnum TA is looking in, in the camera, buddy. Mm-mm. Bad news. And I get that. Hey, let me ask you about later this night. We talked a little bit earlier about how they're going to do this experiment where they're going to sell out the Charlotte Coliseum, but also run closed circuits, if you will, to uh, Charlotte Park Center and the Spartanburg Memorial Auditorium. I found in my research mm. that misty blue and linda dallas was the opening match didn't you say there was something about those ladies before yeah there's uh jackie crockett told me about this uh that misty blue and cat larue i don't know about linda dallas they they also deal with some porn Mm. as a matter of fact i've jackie told me back then he said you know they've done some porn i said yeah he said yeah let me show it to you and we were back in the office one day and i watched it and, uh, so I'm sure you can find it Well, they, were, I know you can find it, but I'm sure you can find it somewhere. Um, hell of a hand, <laughs> a, a couple of real good hands. Okay. Well, here's the reason I, I bring this up. You were the ring announcer. Do you, did you remember that later this day on April 12th, 1986 at the Charlotte Coliseum, you're the ring announcer for the show. Ah, well, there you go. Misty Blue versus Linda Dallas, Jimmy Garvin versus Italian Stallion, mm-hmm. Eddie Fernandez versus Tony Khan's Uncle Tejo, mm. uh, Ricky Morton and the Rock and Roll Express. Of course, him and Robert Gibson are going to take on Bobby and Dennis. It's a non title match, and they've got a uh, Jim Cornette in a cage. You've also got Ron Garvin uh, wrestling Arn Anderson, mm-hmm. Magnum TA working with Nikita Koloff. Uh, and then there, it looks like there's a finish there, but there's a little controversy. Mm. And Dusty and Wahoo will take on Flair and Tully Blanchard in a lights out bull rope slash Indian strap match. So gimmicks on gimmicks on gimmicks. Mm. You were the ring announcer. Talk to mm. us about how that would have came to be. I don't know. But ring announcer. Uh... Now coming to the ring. Mm. Like, I didn't remember you did you doing a lot of that. So it stuck out like a sore thumb. You motherfucker. You, <laughs> well, I, I, I do know that. Just say I, words, Tony, you know, just any, kind I, of, I, I don't know what you're at. at, at you're how often did it. you do ring announcing? Where was truck and Tom Miller? Why did they okay. not have a normal ring announcer there? Okay. Was something you did because it was in Charlotte and you just wanted to get the fuck away from Lois. Like. Just anything, just flowery. I feel like we're in a goddamn deposition right now. So I mean, I, uh, hey, I here's think a pro tip. when Bruce Pritchard doesn't know, he makes it up. So, <laughs> okay. Out. All right. I, I don't, uh, I think I was, I think I was the regular ring announcer for Charlotte by that time. Okay. There was a guy named CJ Underwood who was a, a TV personality, WBTV in Charlotte. And he would, uh, he was the ring announcer and I've told the story about how I replaced him that day when he didn't show up. And as we moved on in time, I kind of became the Charlotte ring announcer. I did a lot of ring announcing, which I thoroughly enjoyed. I enjoyed ring announcing almost probably better than I enjoyed being on TV because it was such a relaxed atmosphere. And, you know, especially when we were like out West, I could get away with a lot of shit. Um, Misty blue and cat and Linda Dallas, but especially Misty and cat would do this thing where they would, they would battle over to where I was sitting. Cause you know, we would sit right at a real small table at ringside and cat would stick her ass between the ropes, the bottom rope and the middle rope. 
And Misty would pull on her ass and give her a wedgie right in front of my face. They do that spot all the time. And people at ringside go, oh, oh, oh Shivani. Oh, oh, oh. And I go, yeah. Um, but uh, I loved ring announcing. I loved because there was one time we were in, God, where were we? we were in, I think we were in Saginaw, Michigan. And uh, I don't know what I did. I can't remember. It was a Ric Flair match or the introduction or something. And uh, I, I said something during Rick's introduction. I, I Whatever I said, it must have rubbed Rick, Rick the wrong way, or maybe he was just busting my chops. I don't know. And he uh, he took off his robe. I got out of the uh, I got out of the ring and I sat down in in, the, in my seat. And he handed his robe off and he stuck his head through the ropes. He said, you're the worst fucking ring announcer of all time. I said, fuck you. Get in and give us a good match. And I don't know how many people heard that at ringside, but that was an exchange that we had. And that was, see, that was, I could be, I could really be the real Tony Schiavone that I really wasn't there. And, and I loved it, man. I just loved it. I love cutting time. I love shaving time off matches. I love doing that just a lot of fun well by the way i noticed that eastern airlines was very prominent in this show dusty had it on his t-shirt ronnie garvin had it on his hat clearly getting a sponsorship somewhere yeah east, i don't i think eastern is back i'm not sure they were at one time right before the pandemic they may have closed their doors again but eastern airlines was a good airline man uh, we flew eastern a lot there was a the the one that i talk about so much is the 1115 or the 1145 flight from uh, Atlanta to Charlotte that we all try to get on after the Omni. They're back, by the way. Good. That's good, because they were a great airline. And I, I hate to see them. I mean, there was back then it was Delta, Eastern, and Piedmont. That was another airline we flew a lot as well. Here in America, they go to Boston, New York, Miami, and Philadelphia. But you can also go to Ecuador, the Dominican Republic, Paraguay, and uh -huh. Nicaragua. Okay, so I'll pass on that. Until the oh, pandemic's over. Not passing on this. Here we go. The world makes your boy Ric Flair. It was right on this program. Situation developed between you and Ricky Morton of the Rock and Roll Express. Tony Schiavone, if I were to ask you, what do you know firsthand or personally that's worth a million dollars and looks like a million dollars, what would your first answer be? It would have to be the world champion. That's right, Ric Flair. Woo! Custom made Vendico and Rick Michaels, my good friend in Kansas City. Thank you for putting the Nature Boy out front way ahead of Johnny Carson. Because today, as you can see, I'm styling woo, and profiling like never before. Now, Tony Schiavone, let me be the first to pass out all the victory invitations to the Hyatt Regency in New Orleans. Because when I get through with Dusty Rhodes in front of 70,000 people, you can bet woo, the Nature Boy is going to be carrying the Hyatt Regency now. Get in line, girls, because somehow, some way, with double A's and Tony Blanchard having 500 grand apiece, and the Nature Boy carrying woo, the World's Heavyweight Championship, you know that we're going to turn New Orleans woo, upside down. Now, second on the agenda, little itty bitty Ricky Morton. The man whose only claim to fame is little tiny teeny boppers in their training undergarments. Now, Morton, as you know, I like them women with a full sweater and an empty head. I like those double Ds, brother, you know what I'm telling you? I got no time for little girls hollering rock and roll, rock and roll. So Ricky Morton, firsthand, and pay close attention to this, firsthand. When you crossed the line woo, into no man's land and took one of my 150 pairs of Porsche Carrera sunglasses, put them on the floor, stepped on them, then you made me tear 
an $800 custom made cashmere ultra suede blazer, you got yourself in a whole mess of trouble That's right. that only the world champion is going to help you out of right into a stretcher on the way to a hospital. You understand? The first time I see you, Morton, as a matter of fact, I might have a surprise for you, Ricky Morton. So don't turn your back on the great one because it's not nice to fool around with Mother Nature. Woo! Ooh, looking so good. Looking good, Tony. Go for it, girls. Go for it, New Orleans. I'm going to have an open calendar all night long. Woo! The heavyweight champion of the world makes your boy Ric Flair. Don't you go away. How great is that? He's married out here on TV saying, I got an open calendar all night long, girls. I love the, the, I love the comment of full sweater and an empty head. How, how, how would that be received today? I use it all the time, <laughs> but yeah, I borrowed that. I mean, people in Huntsville think I created it. They don't know. I just stole it from an old flare promo. Mm, okay. Well, there you go. I mean, let's appreciate too. We just heard full sweater, empty head, double D's. Blah, blah, mm -hmm. blah. A couple of weeks ago, we heard him say on the syndicated show over at patreon.com forward slash WSW Monday, bodacious tatas to Bob right. Hoddle, which I couldn't believe. Mm -hmm. And then last week. We had Dusty out here talking about uh, baby doll's bosoms looking like the, the pyramids of Egypt. Rick's back here. And being here, the lending you a little of my expertise. Well, I would agree that he is one of the world's greatest athletes. There's no doubt he about it. He wouldn't be the world champion if he wasn't. Woo. Okay, the world TV title here with us at ringside. Hey! So we got Rick Flair on color here as we see Sam Houston, a uh, skinny little Sam Houston, mm -hmm. challenging. Uh, Mr. Zero Bar himself, mm -hmm. Arn Anderson, who's rocking the old classic Anderson boots. Arn would call it buggy whip arms. Yeah. That will be another Arn Anderson. We got that kid the size of a zipper with buggy whip arms. They want me to go in and wrestle. Just, it's just, he had a hell of a working punch too, didn't he? Oh yeah. Yeah, man. Well, the greats did. Sam Houston's uh, Mid-Atlantic Championship did not last long. I wonder where that belt wound up. I don't know. I've, I've talked to you about the, the belt that, uh, the one that I remember, the one that was white. Mm. Do you, have you seen pictures of that? Hacksaw, mm -hmm. uh, Hacksaw uh, Buzz Tyler was the man who walked out left with it, right? Left with, it. I was there when he left with it. He came in to do one interview for Kansas city, one interview because Bob Geigo wanted him to come in and do an interview that we would send to Kansas city. And Gene Anderson was not going to put Bob Geigo stuff in front of our stuff. And act and buzz Tyler waited, buzz is a good guy. He waited all day. And finally he'd had enough. He cut a mo promo on Gene. He said, I've been here. I've been quiet. Only thing I need to get done is one promo. And I've waited all fucking day. That's it. Fuck this place. I'm out of here. He walked out, had the belt in his possession. Never saw him again. I'm not so sure Buzz Tyler ever wrestled again. To be honest with you. Isn't it weird how people just get to a point where they're so frustrated and then they're just like, nope, that's it. I'm done. Yeah. I mean, I feel like we, we got that with uh, Dennis Condry and we got it with Buzz Tyler. Right. We got it with Tony Schiavone. Oh yeah. In 01. It's a shame that I, I couldn't find Buzz Tyler because he might've still actually known where his championship belt he stole was. Unlike you just misplaced. We know, it. we know, we know where it, we, we've established. We know where it is. Hey, we know exactly where it is. Pipe down. You nothing happened in life. Go into Petco field, Petco park in San Diego. Let me just, and, and it'd be, be easy now because they are not a hundred percent capacity in major fucking league baseball and go in there with a fucking mallet or a hammer and break the fucking trophy case and take it out and say, that's mine. Brian Bowringer said it was mine. Bad money, Ooh. slim, bad money, slim. If you love me, you'll get this done. Okay. 
Let me just say though, I just want to give everybody a heads up on what's happened here. You said on this show many years ago that it was in the attic and you Thought. were going to get it down and you were going to give it to me. Thought. It was my present. Thought. I want, here's what I want everyone listening to do. I want you to go to your wife and say, hey, baby, I got you a present. Here's what it is. And I'm going to get it for you in the next couple of days. I promise. And then let her ask about it for fucking years. <laughs> and then when she asks where it is, tell her it's in a goddamn jewelry store <laughs> on the other side of the country. <laughs> Just go in there with a fucking mallet and steal the shit and say, that's mine. My husband said it was mine. That's what you just said. <laughs> yeah, when you put it that way. <laughs> so I, I got you a great present, Tony. <laughs> I, I, I don't want a present from Arn Anderson. Not only did he spine buster the shit out of Sam Houston, then mm -hmm. he rubbed his, his face into the map. Yeah. Hey, did you see Medusa freak out on me a couple of weeks ago? No. Was it on uh, ad free shows? It was on twitter there was a clip of uh her and medusa her, her name is medusa her and sherry having a match on nitro right and sherry held her down for the pin and medusa was trying to kick out and it looked like she kind of did mm -hmm. uh, and then as soon as sherry's celebrating medusa picks her up gives her a, a german suplex mm -hmm. and then it looks like she's unconscious uh, medusa said medusa took great issue with people who were offended by this clip but then she starts paintbrushing her and punching her and then just ramming her head into the mat. Mm -hmm. And I, I, I replied and I said, damn. And tag Medusa, did Sherry owe you money? And mm -hmm. showed the old Friday gif. Mm -hmm. and so then she just went off and called me a stupid motherfucking dick and all this. And I'm like, okay. Wow. Mm -hmm. Speaking yeah. of stupid motherfucking dicks, here's one talking to Arn Anderson. Let's take a listen. That went over Sam Houston. <laughs> Houston. You had one shot at greatness, one shot at getting in the mainstream. My friend, I've sweat, I've bled, I've hurt, and you look into my eyes, and I tell you, I've earned the world television title. That means I'll beat guys like Rhodes, guys like Magnum, guys like Wahoo, Manny Fernandez, the list goes on. I get on national television, put my reputation on the line, all for this, every week. The Jim Crockett Memorial Cup, Tony Giovanni, most prestigious title ever for a tag team, right? Well, Tully Bradshaw and myself are going to New Orleans. Get off that jet, jump in that limousine. My friend, we're gonna have a few cocktails, but when it gets time for business, Saturday afternoon, Saturday night, whatever it takes, you rest assured, Tully Blanchard and myself, two of the four horsemen will be reigning at the end of the night, $1 million richer. And in case you want to know where Ole is, my credibility is based on one thing. When I tell you something, it's going to happen. Ole Anderson will be back, period. All right, you heard it from Arn Anderson, the world TV champion. We're coming right back. And by the way, when we're coming back, we're hearing from the Rock and Roll Express. Who we're going to throw down the gauntlet for Mr. Ric Flair. It's a big moment in JCP history, and here it is. So far on World Championship Wrestling, Excitement Plus, and you hear the pandemonium. It's for the Rock and Roll Express. I know a lot of things are on your mind. Getting the World Tag Team title back, winning the Jim Crockett Senior Memorial Cup, and Ric Flair, especially on your mind, Rick. That's right, Tony. You're talking about the World Tag Team titles and Midnight Express. You know, they never did beat the Rock and Roll Express for them titles. So, Midnight, don't turn your back because Rock and Roll, sooner or later, will become the new NWA World Tag Team Champions. In New Orleans, Woo! probably senior the Memorial Cup and the big trophy plus $1 million. We're looking forward to it, New Orleans. That's right, Tony. You know, every gold a professional wrestler's life is either being the World Tag Team Champions or the World's Heavyweight Champions. Now, we are. And I'll say this right now, gonna be the world's tag team champions again and very soon. But as for you, Ric Flair, you have come out here and you put down all our people. You have put down rock and roll and you say what you're gonna do to Ricky Morton. But let me tell you something, Ric Flair, you have run off the mouth. Now you come out here and you show me, show me what you got, Flair, because I don't believe. I don't believe and I know it, Tony. I don't think he can beat Rick Morton or Robert Gibson. You know, any situation, it could be Robert 
or myself. But Ric Flair, you come on, brother. Take your best shot, and don't you blow it. Ricky Morton, Robert Gibson. They'll have a match a little bit later on on this program. Right now, let's go back to the ring. So you said they're both going to have a match. So, mm. but, but the singles match is coming. Mm. I Sean fucked up. Motley, one of our favorites. He's in mm -hmm. the ring now with your old pal, the Barbarian. I'm perplexed of, and I, I probably don't want to go too far into this. I'm perplexed about uh, Medusa's responses. Well, I think people were piling on her saying she was unprofessional. I wasn't there. I was just putting over yeah. a performance. Like, I never know what's real and what's not real. I know yeah. that sounds silly, but sometimes folks are so good at selling this or selling that or whatever. That sure. They're really hurt. And then, you know, they just sort of roll their eyes. Like, there's been things that happen on Dynamite where I'm like, fuck, that looked bad. So I, you know, text the guy and be like, hey, man, great show tonight. I hope you're okay. And they'd respond laughing, like, yeah, I'm fucking fine. That was my job, but thanks. So anyway, I, I, I didn't think much of it. I didn't think that anybody was you know, seriously injured or something would have came out about all that. Anyway, she just flew off the handle. It was kind of fun. So, well, I just, there's a, there's a story here. There's a moral. Uh, don't interact with Medusa on Twitter. That's a one. That's one. Oh, no, no, another one is, uh, another one is don't fuck with a booker. Uh, wow. Look at that. Look at that power, buddy. By the way, I was thinking this, we saw our, our boy Shaska, the former Pez Watley teaming mm -hmm. with, uh, barbarian hypothetically, if they had been making towns together and they wound up. I think the phrase is healing a room. Mm. And so it was Pez, Barbarian, and Tommy Young. <laughs> what do you think that would have been like? I, I knew that was on the way. Pez would just been in the corner giggling. We got to get Tommy Young on the show. Mm. Yeah, we do. We, knew, we, we need to get Tommy on. Absolutely, we do. Tommy will give us a good, you know, two, two and a half hours of shit. You know oh, how he goes. Gotta do, say, ladies and gentlemen, Tommy Young. And then you and I can go make a sandwich. <laughs> I agree. But here's yeah. a truism about this. Tommy Young didn't work the studio. Did you see that bump right there? Mm-hmm. The, the monkeys would take those crazy bumps. Dude, that was insane. Yeah. That was like a Mick Foley. I mean, a low-key Foley. Mm-hmm. But again, we, we, we see Tommy on the syndicated show, but we didn't see him in the studio. He was not based in Atlanta. So they thought we can just not have to fly him down and he can go on to the towns and work the towns, which I thought was interesting. He would, you know, later on, he would work the, uh, the old, uh, he would work the shows at center stage and that's where he got hurt. I believe at center stage. But he never really worked, at least we haven't seen it yet this year, any of the uh, the TBS studio stuff. This was all like Pee Wee and it was kind of Pee Wee's domain, wasn't it? I mean, we. Pee Wee's all over this show. Yeah, he's all over it. Absolutely. God, the, everything the Barbarian did was such force. Look at that. It's like, fuck, man. Get out of his fucking way. <laughs> By the way, as we're talking, uh, it's uh, thunder and lightning. It's a rough situation here in Huntsville, Alabama. Oh, really? Mm hmm You know what? It always seems that Alabama is always in the path of bad storms. Stuff coming up from the Gulf. Well, I'm not down there. No. Stuff I'm coming up. We're in the good part. Well, I get that, but it still comes up from the Gulf and goes up through Alabama and goes a little bit of it hits Georgia and goes up towards Nashville, up Tennessee. You know, they've had floods in Nashville and everything. It seems like you're just, you're always in the way of the system. Well, they know Miami will never beat us, but the hurricanes still want to go over. So mm, boom. <laughs> yeah. Oh, wait, you, when it comes to football talk mm. as a uh, fellow wrestling podcaster, and Miami Hurricanes fan would say, that's mm -hmm. enough. <laughs> Dude, I fucking love Pez Wiley. Look at that. By the way, Paul Jones, mm -hmm. let's just talk about it for a minute. Paul Jones <laughs> in his freely fucking dumb and dumber suit. Mm -hmm. Stupid. 
Paul Jones looking like an extra from police Academy here in his commandant outfit. <laughs> awesome. <laughs> that uh, That's it for me. Yeah. And I love the, the two months we heard I'm building an army and you're thinking, mm -hmm. okay, we get it, an army and army. It's stupid. Then he shows up in this outfit. Yeah. Totally redeems himself. Yeah. How he looks like an extra from a, a live action GI Joe movie. <laughs> Oh, look at Pez, dude, pushing the referee out of the way. God, I love Pez. I would do anything to have Pez on the show, but uh, the only way that's going to be possible is with the seance. We should do a wrestling seance. I've often wanted to do that. Oh, well, let's do it. And, and okay. it will probably be more entertaining than this. Why don't you do this promo? Because okay. we know what it's going to sound like. So you just do it okay. for us. So we finally saw Yes, we finally saw Nikita Kolov wrestle on TV. And I told Nikita, take the shirt off. Show your muscles. I know you're in love with Miss Alabama, but think for just a moment. Think for a moment that you've got big traps. You've got big biceps, big triceps. You even have big forearms. You may have a small dick, but that is the process of stuff you may ingest. I'm not so sure. I never did it. The fact is, at one time, I was in the main event at Madison Square Garden. Me, the main event at Madison Square Garden. Now I got to my right, this fucking goof. He's a goof. He's not even really my nephew. But I'll talk for him. You know why? Because he can't talk for himself. He really thinks this Russian stuff is a gimmick. It's not. I'm from Canada. He's from Golden, Minnesota. That's right. And he wants to change his name. He wants to fucking change it. Do you believe this? He really believes he's Nikita Koloff. He believes it's for real. He's going to spend money, hard-earned money, I may say, to actually have his name changed in court. Who in the f I didn't change my name. My name is not really Ivan Koloff, but yeah, Uncle Ivan, the way I spend money is my business. And if I put on my shirts to cover up this great body, it's my business. I know it's stupid. I know I shouldn't do it, but I don't care. Do you know why? Because I haven't realized it now, but I'm going to realize it in years from now. Shatoata, Jesus is on my side. That's right, he is. And when Jesus is on your side, Uncle Ivan, you can change your name. You can go to Madison Square Garden. You can be on the top. You can wrestle Pedro Morales. You can be the WWWWWF champion or whatever they called it back then. But here's the fact. I've got the Russian chain, and I'll use it, and I will take my shirt off when I damn well please. Do you know why? Because I got heat with the boys in the back. No one really likes me. A uh, Jesus. Well, that's from my nephew, Nikita. He's really not Nikita Koloff, but he thinks he is. He's really going to legally. You can go into the court records and see that he legally changed his name. How much did he spend for that, for God's sakes? Realizing this gimmick is going to last forever? Did he think when he was 60 that he was still going to wrestle as Nikita Koloff in a chain match? No, he wouldn't be booked. Well, that's not true. Jesus would book him. All right, there you hear it from the Koloffs. I love them shoot interviews. Conrad, I'm talking to you, you piece of shit. We'll be back with this more after this. It's way better than what they really said. By the way. Yeah, it was. <sighs> All right, trailer back in the ring. Who could, who could forget what a great year he had? Oh, by the way. Yeah. Yeah. I can't believe this is real. Okay. What? Let's track it here. Okay, fans, the Rock and Roll Express going up in this match against Big Ray Trailer and Carl Styles as Pee Wee Anderson, the referee, gets wait one second. The heavyweight champion of the world, Nature Boy Ric Flair, is right at ringside. He wants to wait a minute. He said, We don't have to wait. I want more than right now. Flair's going to the ring. Rick Flair, the world champion, says he wants Ricky Morton right now. He's going to the ring. Great trailer across the house have been drop kicked out of here. Oh, my. Now, Pee Wee Anderson doesn't know what to do here. He's, he is the star. Here are, and of all the millions of fans. 
Hampton. It's on right there. Tackle. Take down Morton. So how about it, man? Starts yeah. a tag match, impromptu, flares out, and now we've got a singles match. This is a big time deal. We don't normally see Ric Flair wrestle on TV. And, and when we do, it's a pretty rare occasion. Of course, these days you would see the champ wrestle every single week. Uh, but here, this is probably, I don't know, like his third or fourth match on TV of the year. Right. And, and it's not against a quote unquote enhancement talent. It's not him and George South, not disparaging George at all. Just saying it's against Ricky Morton, who is another top act. I mean, let's put this in perspective. You've essentially got two touring brands here to use a common phrase that fans are familiar with these days. So instead of it being an A town and a B town, let's think about it as it's raw versus SmackDown. So you've got, you know, the two top acts from both of those tours, from both of those shows in an impromptu unadvertised, let's shit it and get it match. This is what made this show so fun to watch and such a big hit nationally, right? Oh my God. It's the, the unexpected and absolutely. And because you had great fan reaction and. It was, I mean, logically you would think since he broke his glasses and talked about the, the jacket that he would want a piece of Ricky Morton, normally chicken shit heels, which is <clears throat> what these heels always are, would talk a big game and then not follow through. But Rick goes in the ring and does this and the fans go crazy. Now this goes back to the talk about <clears throat> dusty booking this mm -hmm. and not wanting to, uh, not wanting to uh, let the Rock and Roll Express outshine them. Right, exactly. Uh, there's some validity in that, I would think. But I, I just, I mean, to me, this was good business. And they <clears throat> they were going to have these Great American Bashes this summer. And Ric Flair would have many different opponents. One of them that would be Ricky Morton. And that would be in Charlotte, the outdoor show. Great Beal. And... I never saw pro I, I didn't at that time I didn't see it as Dusty trying to break up the Rock and Roll Express. But, you know, I, I know I do get what Ricky and Robert are saying, and I get about Dusty's ego. So there may be uh some where well, there's a Frankensteiner before it's time. Uh right. there, yeah, there may be some uh validity to that. Notice the kid in the front with a Hulkamania shirt. <laughs> <laughs> that wouldn't fly today. Good stuff, man. Good stuff. And it's it's one of the things, besides the interviews, it's one of the things that kept you coming back because you didn't know what you're going to see. And that's why enhancement matches worked. Greg Gagne told me this all the time. And, you know, I always thought Greg was a fucking knucklehead. Uh, but he and I got along, played golf together a lot. I remember we played golf in Asheville, North Carolina one time. And this was during the weekend when we had a show in Asheville, a, a pay-per-view. And Greg Gagne said, and this is back when we were not doing enhancement matches on TV. He said, the only way you're going to pop the big houses now is you have to give them less. He said, less is more. You have to pull back on what we're doing. Yeah. And, and I, I agreed with that because back then house shows were important. It, it's a completely different monster now, but I, I, I believe that I believe those enhancement matches were important. I mean, it gives us a chance to bullshit you and I, because, and we step out during the interviews because they're, that's what it's all about. But it was the interviews and it was something like this that you never know if you could see it or not. They kept you coming back. How about cutting off on that, that bump? What the fuck? He's right. going to go out of the ring. We got to go to the ring. Let's track a little bit here. And to the studios, WTBS still on their feet all around here. And at home, you're watching in on what has become a great match from the word go. Ric Flair issued in a challenge to Ricky Morton of the Rocky Roll Express. And Pee Wee Anderson, the referee giving his consent to have this match go on. Morton, the flying body press, holy got a two count. Flair ducked away from that punch, 
and drives his head to the turnbook. Both men during the break exchanging blows toe to toe. One getting the advantage, then the other at Flair. One step ahead that time with a foot. And now Morton, he has Morton up for his gigantic vertical suplex. And hard down. Flair in control right now. Robert Gibson encouraging Ricky Morton on. Arn Anderson predicting the end, he was wrong. Arn Anderson said that's it, but he was wrong. Morton comes right back again. And the huh. rock and roll continues. Here they go again. Two of the greatest athletes in the world right here. Flair hits the turn by go. High backdrop. Morton ready again. Ricky Morton now to the top turnbuckle. A drop kick off of the top rope. And Ric Flair is face down. Ricky Morton trying to set Flair up for a neck breaker. And now holding on to Flair's chin. Ric Flair trying to get out of this. Oh, great move. Flair goes right up. He has Morton, or he's had Morton again trying to get that suplex. Now Ricky Morton turning around as Flair. Ricky Morton has the world champion down. Can he get up to maybe try for a pin? Man, the crowd's so into this. And they're putting some time into this, too. Yeah. And that's what's great about this. It's not one of those angles where Flair gets like a drop kick or something says, fuck it, that's it, or Arn runs in and they are they are and, and Robert's getting into it, which helps the fans get into it. This is very well done. And I've got to thinking about this. There was a missed spot that Ricky swung at Flair and missed, and Flair just backed up and they just went into something else. This may be the finish. No. And and it just, it hit me back then. It hit me when I saw that, that that is a case of two guys who really knew how to work. Mm -hmm. And why did they know how to work? Well, first of all, they had a talent. Second of all, they worked a lot. Yes. And they knew how to improvise if something went wrong. Right. We, we don't have that now. Well, and the guys are working twice a month. Right. Exactly. And you learn your craft by house shows. That's how you learn your craft. And I know we had a house show, our first one at uh, Daly's place. How was that by the way? Hey, it was great. It was, it was great from all, I, I wasn't there, but from all indications, it was great. We had a good, we had everybody on the card, all the champions. So it, it was, it was good. So, but, and I know that I know world's different now. I know there's a pandemic and, and I, I, I knew that, well, there's a referee bump, but down. look at Pee Wee Anderson, the referee. Inadvertently run into as Ric Flair now throws Ricky Morton over the top rope. Ricky Morton over the top rope, which would be, as you know, a disqualification if the referee would have been able to view it. And now Ricky Morton turns the tables on Flair, and Flair hits the post very hard. Ric Flair is in big trouble right now. Ricky Morton and Flair both in the ring at Pee Wee Anderson. I thought we were going to see something big there. Yeah. So anyway, we just, uh, there needs to be, and that's why the wrestling schools like the Nightmare Factory are so important now, because that's where kids can learn and do some things. But man, we, if, if, if you think today, there you go, could have been, should have been. If you think today, if you, if you're one of those, uh, people online who think you know it all and there are plenty of you out there and say, well, the work rate ain't what it used to be. Well, fucking duh. Because you learn your craft. Here we go. Robert's going to call. Robert's going to boom, drop kick Arn. One, two, three. Try it.
Flair bladed too, bro. Yeah, he did. <laughs> I was thinking about that too. Robert Gibson said it, but there's the pin. Dusty Rhodes has joined us. Dusty Rhodes and Baby Doll here with a Rock and Roll Express. I told you people to do it, and I did it just for you, baby. Let me tell you something. You know, Rick Flack comes out here week in and week out, shooting his mouth off, talking about what he's going to do, jumping in everybody's face. This right here is an example, Ric Flair, of what goes down. Every time you tell a Dusty Rhodes, Ronnie Garvin, Ricky Morton, Robert Gibson, Magnum J, every time you wind up in the middle of the ring, flat on your That's where you wind up. That's where you wind up. It does my heart good. Ric Flair, you won't make it to New Orleans. Robert, this is my main man, but let me tell you something. Get him ready, because it's going to be me and him. In New Orleans for that world title. That's right. You still got that right, Tony. I told you, Rick Flair, I'll beat you. And I'm going to do it again, baby. The new world's champion. And you saw it right here on the Superstation. You better not go in. So that's the uh, the rumor in Innuendo is that Dusty wanted to break them up and they wanted to put the title on Ricky. And Ricky says, I told him no. Mm. There's even a famous promo shot out there of him posing with the belt. And here's Jim Cornette. I'm incognito today because everybody's after me. Ever since the Midnight Express became the World Tag Team Champions, ever since the Jim Crockett Senior Memorial Cup came up, the Midnight Express have been the number one celebrities in the sports world. All the reporters want us for interviews, all the TV news cameras, all of our opponents are calling saying, take it easy on us because we want a chance at million dollars too. And you know who else is after me? Precious Paul Ellering. Precious Paul's trying to find me all over the place saying, please, Please, Jim Cornette, ask the Midnight Express to go easy on the Road Warriors. Don't destroy the legend of my men because, you know, we got matches coming up. Well, let me tell you something, Precious Paul. The Midnight Express are 12 feet tall and 500 pounds. Not like your Road Warriors, six and a half feet tall and 300 pounds because the Road Warriors are a couple of muscle-bound clowns that have paired up together to be a tag team. The Midnight Express are twin sons of different mothers, one unit one machine, and they are going to make all your brags about the Road Wars being unbeatable, as phony as a get well card from an undertaker. Ladies and gentlemen, the World Tag Team Champions, Lover Boy, Dennis, and beautiful Bobby, the Midnight Express. We don't have a ton of time here, so mm, great Paul line. Garner and Bob Owens do not have uh, much of a chance here. No, as phony as a get well card from an undertaker. What a great line. Jesus. Yeah, he, he, he came up with them, man. He came up with a lot of stuff and could work it into his promos. Just, just really, really good. Well, uh, back to that, uh, that dusty roads, Ricky Morton thing. I, I could just, and I couldn't at that time, but I can now dusty came out there impromptu yeah, and took Ricky's time. Yeah. And I, it didn't set well with Ricky. You could see that yeah, because Ricky didn't have player. Yeah. Ricky didn't have much to say, right? Process what we're talking about. He just beat the world champion. Mm -hmm. he, he's not even able to cut a promo and revel in it. Dusty right. slides in. Right. Dusty, Dusty does a good job putting him over. Yeah. But still, he takes up his interview time. So, And says, hey, by the way, it's going to be me and you for the world title. Mm -hmm. Right. Well, can we just talk about the fact that he's still got to win it first? And he just beat the champ. Well, but I mean, that's, that, I, I saw that as dusty confident. This guy can beat flair. Well, I'm with you on that, but right. immediately, Hey, and then I get a title shot. It's like, let's mm. fucking just let Ricky have his moment here. Right, right, right. Exactly. But how oh, about well. that, though? I'm sure dusty could, could go the argument the other way and say, well, he's a tag team wrestler. I was giving him my endorsement as one of mm -hmm. the top stars. I could see that. Yeah. So that's the thing is I'm not saying that dusty is a bad guy. I'm just saying everybody has their view on what they're doing and justification for what they're doing. And I don't know, it's just one of those things. Yeah. And again, as much as I love working with dusty, I mean, we all knew about his ego. We did flair had an ego. My God, you, you couldn't be one of the top stars without one. I don't think unless you're Bobby Eaton, right? <laughs> Bobby didn't have an ego. Let's track it here. We got uh, Paul Jones army here. Shaska, Baron Von Raschke and the Barbarian. What's what's in the bag here? I can tell by the cards and letters they know here is seen that people are trying to take us serious. The army is completed. You see here, you see two-thirds of the army. 
And now, Jimmy Valiant, we have a surprise for you. That's right. That's right. Right in here, Jimmy Valiant. We have a surprise for you. Shut up, here, Billy. Don't you see me out here talking? I'm going to tell you what. I got a surprise for Jimmy Valiant. Let me see if I can find it in here. Move all this stuff out the way. Look what I got. Oh, look what I got. Oh, look what I got. <laughs> Guess what this is? This is your hair, Jimmy Valiant. This is your horse hair. We gonna cut your hair from now to your bald and skinny head and disgrace in front of all your fat wrestling friends. Ain't that right, boss? And I'm gonna tell you another thing. If you think it in your buddies, go stick their nose in the business. Look at here. I got this one right here to crush your face, and this one right here to crush your brains beside the superior intelligence of Paul Jones. And I'm going to tell you another thing. All the rest of y'all out there, go find it out that it, we it, are the baddest one right out there. Sit on over there. there. You don't know what you're talking about over there. <laughs> we got them all going to. We'll see you next week right here on World Championship we Wrestling. And another thing, Tony. God, I love that guy. Did Paul Jones say colored people? Did he? I think he did. Oh. You know what? I, I, I'm going to rewind this if that's the case. Because Lord knows if he did say that, we'll never hear it again on Peacock. So let me hear it. We going to oh. cut your hair from now to your bald and skinny head and disgrace in front of all your fat wrestling friends. Ain't that right, boss? And I'm going to tell you another thing. If you think it ain't your buddies, go stick their nose in the off business. Look at here. I got this one right here to crush your face and this one right here to crush your brains beside the superior intelligence of Paul Jones. And I'm going to tell you another thing. All the rest of y'all out there, go find it out that it, we it's are the baddest one right out there. there. Sit down over there. You don't know what you're talking about over there. He did. He did. <laughs> Jesus Christ. <laughs> How did they miss that on the network? Well, we just brought oh. Peacock's attention, so. Yeah, my God. It'll be the last time you ever hear that. Wow. Whew. Well, anyway, take that out, which you should. And my God, fucking Shaska could cut a fucking promo, couldn't he? Oh, God. This, this guy crushed your face and this guy crushed your brains. I love that. I, and another thing, Tony. <laughs> it's so good. We're going to have to start doing that. I know. Just pistol pez, man. God, God rest his soul. What a fucking underrated fucking talent. <sighs> Why didn't he go to the WWF? I don't know, man. I don't know. I, I mean, I, I would have looked at him if I'm at the WWF and I would have looked at talent that, that could do some shit. He could work and obviously he could talk. Ah, I mean, they used, they used other guys there that weren't as talented as him. A uh, lot of yeah. them. Yeah. Yeah. I don't get it. I, I don't get it. Colored people. <laughs> Like it's fucking 1961. Yeah, I know. And we apologize. We, we, we profusely apologize for that getting out on the air, but we had to go back and make sure that's what we heard. And that's what we heard. I, and I, mean, I don't even know what to say. I don't even, and it, it escaped the network. Attention, Peacock people. Uh, World Championship Wrestling, April 12th, at the end of it, have your beeps ready. I know how to do it. I can, I can do an audio beep for you. You don't I can, have shit, Tony. Oh, who the who puts this motherfucking show together after you're done with it? Me. Who puts the motherfucking commercials in? Me. Who sends a commercial list to Dave fucking nothing happening green and the people at Westwood One? Me. So don't tell me I don't know how to do shit. Who set up JR's stuff for him to record? Me. Who set up Arn Anderson's stuff at his house to record? Me. So fuck you. Have a nice day. Looks like it's about that time. I don't know what to say. I had things planned, but Paul Jones, uh, my God, they're dogpiling Paul Jones. Beat the fuck out of that dumb son of a... Oh, God bless Paul Jones. He's dead. I shouldn't talk about the deceased like that. We are desperately out of... Stop it, fucking ass, please. Desperately out of time. See you next time on What Happened When. On Wednesdays, we're on Westwood One. I should know. I edit the show. And on Mondays, we're on... Patreon. Patreon.com forward slash WHW Monday.
Ad free shows. Good come. Hi, Medusa. Make the noise. <laughs> By the way, Bug was sound asleep until you started yelling. <laughs> and it popped. <laughs> it popped him, huh? Oh, yeah. God. He's like <laughs> intently watching, like something's going on with that now. <laughs> Tony, what if this is it? What if this is the last 1986 show we get to watch? It was a great show. It was a great show. I, I hope, hopefully it's not, uh, but we'll have something planned. You and I will hop into a car and drive to New Orleans and back. Well, that that's just got, that's money. But what, I mean, we are going to get some 86 folks, you know, some old Jim Crockett personalities. We are going to watch some silly wrestling. We are going to have Cassio kid back. We will do some road trips, but man, this was such a fun thing. And. I don't know. It just feels like it's uh, coming to an end here. For well, I, 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 I do hope, and you have friends in high places. I do hope and I do think that the plan is to eventually have everything downloaded. And, and no. I know I, I bust their chops saying, you know, do it, put in the link or whatever. Um, but I do think they will they eventually will will do it. Oh, no. I, I know it's coming. Yeah. And I know that we've got alternative methods in the meantime, but... Mm -hmm. I really wish that everyone at home could easily access those as well. So yeah. I hope that happens sooner rather than later. But even if we do have to take a break, a um, little moment of silence here for a good idea, a weekly watch along for 1986. Hope to be back to it soon. We're still going to persevere. Look how many times we've changed course on this show so far. And every time it just somehow seems to get better and better and better. So I'm excited for what's next, but. Man, what a show to go out on. Ricky Morton pinning Ric Flair. Mm. It's a great episode. And the rest of 1986 is loaded with stuff. It really is. And hopefully, you know, Great American Bash, tragically, the, the Magnum accident, the best of seven, Rock, Rock and Roll Cup. Express Super Summer Sizzler Tour. A lot of great shit. A lot of great shit. And we're going to get to it sooner rather than later by hook or damn crook. And let me tell you another thing, Tony. We are out of time. We'll see you next week right here on what happened when hey hey it's conrad thompson thanks for checking out the podcast here on youtube be sure to hit the subscribe button and the notifications bell so you get a notice anytime we upload some new content and go save yourself some money right now if you're in a 30-year loan or you have credit card debt it's not a matter of if I can save you money, it's a matter of how much. Find out right now for free at SaveWithConrad.com.